about Nigeria, let's just pause a while before we move on. I will say Nigeria has problems. Does it mean Nigeria is going to die with a problem? We should talk about what are the problems in Nigeria? What were the problems in China before China got this impressive success level? How does China go about their problem? How should Nigeria go about their own problem? If we discuss and iterate this way, Nigeria problem will be over. Through of us. What's the problem in China, in Ghana? Was it the exact problem in China some years back? How did the Chinese approach the problem? How should Ghana approach the problem now? It's not about where we know there are, in China the major problem there in Ghana, the major problem is the wage bill in the balance sheet of the government. Right? Ghana have taken one billion euro bond loan at seven percent. It doesn't solve the problem. It has taken an IMF loan of one billion dollar. It didn't solve the problem. Now Ghana, where we Ghana borrow from again? Ghana is taking loan from from the from the open market OMO at twenty six percent to fund government projects. And this is the, the challenge there. Well, this is the same challenge in China some years back. Can we locate Ghana problem in China some years back? If we can, then what are the pro what are the solutions that China you know put in place in order to get out of that problem? What is Nigeria problem? 6.01 for 6.03 budget, trillion budget, 1.3 trillion for servicing of debts, right? 2.7 trillion for salary, and the rest for capital expenditure. Then it's a projected income which may not be realized. That created a problem for Nigeria. Was that the situation in China some years back? If you trade the history of China some years back, you will see exactly the Nigeria problem in the hands of China in those years. How did China solve the problem? Is it by educating people? By innovation? By creating an employee environment where Alibaba can do what 20 billion says in a day? Is that the solution? Is it making the monetary report, monetary policy to fund the fiscal policy of the government? That's for government. We, we come to that in the conference and we give government solution. But for our corporation, what is the problem of your company right now? Cost overhead, isn't it? It's running far ahead of revenue. So you could not pay salary. Is that not the problem? Do you talk about cost overrun? Do you talk about Professor Williamson asset specificity? Do you talk about Professor Kwan's theory of economy that the firm will make profit in big sustainability when price is equal to marginal revenue, isn't it? And in a monopoly, it's a quite different situation. When you look at the dead weight laws of a monopoly, in, uh, in perfect markets, it's different. Which market are you operating? Are you a monopoly in your market? Are you operating in a perfect market? Now, how do you sustain marginal revenue to be far ahead of your marginal cost? You have to look inwardly into asset specificity. What do I call it? Asset specificity is internalization of the asset of a corporation. Corporation creating optimum value in asset usage. As a, as a bank, do you need 20 branches in Ghana of 22 million people? Of less than 20% or 30% bankable people? As an insurance company, do you need 63 branches nationwide? That's exactly what we're talking about. And that's what we want to look at. Asset specificity. What do I call it? To what extent are you internalizing your asset? As a media, why do you need 27 people in that me? I look at the mirror the other time, and the number of people in that me were 27 people, and I ask the question, who are they doing? Different from supply and distribution. How do you want to pay salary? If you overload the people, when you need to overload technology, how informed are you in your technology adventure? The people that you are having there, how competent are they, are they in, in, in the technology? If they're if they are illiterate, then how will they be able to move the company forward? So let me begin to look, I'm trying to look at creating some problems, creating some solutions you think about. Is your problem about internalization? If I look at me as a person, as Jibo Ibrahim, sometimes I look at my store and I saw seven cars and I ask myself, where do you ride the seven cars? So I told my manager, go and put them for sale and leave two. In other words, I'm not internalizing the assets. 
If you sell two out of seven cars, you get money for five and you invest the money. You won't be blaming, blaming government for not being able to feed your family. If you begin to acquire more car, more car, more car, and then you cannot use them, you are not doing effective utilization of the assets. That is what we live in is saying. We live in is saying that beyond the theory of firm, um, beyond your cost analysis of marginal cost and, and, and average cost or total cost or whatever cost you use, there is a transaction cost and asset specificity as a consign and challenge to managers. Managers that will create efficiency in cooperation must be ready to internalize our asset to optimal value of utilization. So the message today, when you go back, find out the asset you are using that you don't supposed to have. Some assets, you even service them. You can imagine Nike Insurance being council tax in London for an office that it doesn't use. That is not efficiently internalizing the corporation asset to bring up to my value. You can't get primary income in Nigeria and you to pay British government for their local tax. As an airline, you have five aircraft or ten aircraft, four of them are the, on the time for five for a week or two weeks. Is that an effective utilization of assets? So forget about this theory of marginal cost, marginal revenue, Africa, dead weight law of monopoly. Nobody's interested. We are now interested in how efficient are you in internalizing your assets? If you tell me your balance sheet is one billion in, in, in assets, I want to find out what is the rent coming from the assets. If it's 2% of 1 billion, it means you are an inefficient manager because you are not analyzing the asset very well. What do you think the regulators are concerned about? NICOM and Central Bank of Nigeria? They want to see how are you able to turn around the balance sheet. You want a balance sheet of 200 billion naira? So, what did you get as a return of cost to shareholders? 2%. If a shareholder puts 200 billion naira into the bank, you know, you will get 17% interest rates. But you put it in your hands, you are producing 2% return. Is that an efficient manager? If you diagnose and you bring a diagnosis with you, you realize a lot of the assets are hanging on without efficient internalization of assets. So, corporation and manager today must think and worry about assets uh, specificity. We we'll look at that more in the KIA conference, and I think one of our professors will come to give a lecture on asset specificity. You know, how can I get more value from our assets? Not necessarily by selling the assets, but how can we move forward? Now, come to the question, what is China? What was the strategy in China? A company that will be efficient must create competitive strategy. What do I call it? Competitive strategy. Is your strategy competitive? What is strategy? Everybody uses the word strategy, strategy, strategy. What is strategy? I met the director of uh, uh, Miro. I'm sorry to be hard on Miro this morning. I hope uh, GD, where GD? I hope you forgive me. <laughs> Before you came, somebody told me he's the director in charge of uh, uh, strategy in, in, in Miro. And I asked him, can you define strategy? He said, strategy is strategy. <laughs> so what is strategy? Everybody talking about strategy. Is strategy. What is strategy? It's long-time determination of specific goals and allocation of resources to capture those goals. So when you have a long time determination to achieve something, say efficiency and sustainability, then the allocation of the resources you have towards achieving that goal is your corporate strategy. And that definition is not from me, it's from uh, President Chandler, Chandler, that is Chandler, uh, Chandler definition of, of, of strategy, that is 62. So, what am I bringing out here? China has a strategy. Can you say that? China does what? China has a strategy. A strategy to repeat itself as the world leader. From 1740. Repeat it now. We have a strategy. We went back. In those days, there were countries that were, construct they were, they were constructing railway line across China, bypassing China, using China now without taking a pull up from China when China was down. Can they do that now? China has a strategy. And we must have a strategy. What do I say? And we must work towards the strategy, isn't it? To capture what? The long-time objectivity of your goals. Your strategy is to be successful. Your strategy is to be efficient. Your strategy is to be competitive, you know, in, as a corporation. The strategy is not to come down, to have resources. You will get to having money soon.
You can't just have money from the one. You have to work out how to get money. And if it's by sinning, you go to jail. That's not the way to reach. We are not complaining that receive subsidy from government and we don't do government contracts. We've not done one. So we have to work it out by strategy. America didn't give China money to develop. <laughs> it didn't give them money to develop. No. But China is giving America money to the 1.6 trillion in the treasury. What was the strategy of, 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 of China? Let's go on to the slides and then we'll pick up some points. All right, in there. Now, this is it. What has been the success in China? The, the seven works. I'm going to be very fast on this. What, is, what type of strategy does China use? What is strategy itself? I'll give you its definition of strategy. You know, you know, capturing a goal, allocating your resources towards achieving that goal is your strategy. What are your resources? Human and material resources. How do I allocate human being to capture my assets that is not well internalized? That is strategy. How many human beings should I use to internalize the assets? That is strategy. Should I position myself? That is strategy. Should I do a resource base? That is strategy. Should I network? That is strategy. There are different types of strategy you can use. You can positions. You can do position in strategy. What does that mean? Simply means that you are reacting to your competitors. So if NTA is uh, doing a program, you are the television, you are doing the same program. If AIT is doing a program, you are doing the same program. If China is doing a program, you are doing the same program. You are just two different from each other. Seven o'clock is a part of you. Everybody is doing seven o'clock is a part of you. Why don't you do your by nine o'clock? That is position is strategy. You know, people will be divided in viewing the news by seven. Because you are doing part of you, you could put your own by nine. Why don't you make your way by six? Why must it be seven o'clock? Seven o'clock is an issue of competition. It's position is starting. If that's what you have to do to succeed, fine. I'm not saying I'm against it. I'm not giving an example. If you don't use position strategy, then you use resource-based strategy. You can achieve a specific goal by using resources, by deploying your resources to capture that goal, you know, and get there. That is resource-based strategy. You can say, I don't want to use position. I don't want to use resource base. I want to cooperate with everybody in the ecosystem, like Alibaba. It's called value chain strategy. You don't understand it? Yeah. Alibaba decided to work with the ecosystem. Became ecosystem enabler to have a case with you already. So, and that was why Alibaba is successful. So, China could be explained from the point of strategy. Are we clear up to this point? Who is not clear? Raise up your hand if you are not clear. Good. So what is this strategy that we explain China's success that we can borrow from? The first one has to do with strategy. Are you positioning yourself? Are you using resource base? Are you using value chain? That is the question. When we go to the second, second lecture, you will see detail of this, what explains it there. But it's important for you to know that strategy is one of the reasons why China was successful. And then China versus your own company. In your company, how do, what do you learn from China? Strategy is the key issue in China. What competitive advantage does China have over countries? And why is it difficult for retaliation strategy? If China has competitive advantage, why is it difficult for America to retaliate? What competitive advantage does Nigeria have over other countries in the world to be successful? Give me two, 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 two competitive advantage of Nigeria. One, huh? population, fantastic. That's advantage. Huge market. One sixty million people. It's different from South Tome of two hundred thousand. There's no competitiveness between Nigeria and, and South Tome when you come to strategy of how many people. One sixty million. Yes. What other competitive advantage? Yes. Ojo. Huh? Land, yes, you have agriculture, you can do land. You saw what China did, they, they just deployed into agriculture while other country were looking so that they stop importation and their point of change can move up. If you neglect agriculture, you're going to import your food. If you import your food, your foreign aid, your dollar will go down against the, 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 the naira. Your naira will go down against the dollar. And that creates a foreign exchange problem for you in your balance of payments. But if we deploy more into agriculture, it means that rather than people importing juice, 
and you are blaming them for doing so, why? That's the producer of Jews. You have this jacket from the university given to you, imported from the Brit from Britain. There's no producer of this jacket in Nigeria, so that's what you can import. It's simply that you have to beat for the foreign exchange from your country, and then begin to take it to another country. And that's what the problem is. Toothpicks or things like that. It's not that bad. We can't say Nigeria is bad. I don't agree with that. Because Nigeria is just 50 something years old. China, we're talking about 17th century. Nigeria was not discovered at that time. I used to have a joke in Cambridge. I tell my colleagues that look, Cambridge was established in 12th century. Our Cambridge is about 850 years old. It had been awarding degree 150 years before Nigeria was discovered. <laughs> so, what kind advantage does your university have in Nigeria over the world in Britain? Is it historical facts or records? We are not saying you don't have, you are not good in university. Fantastic university we have in Nigeria, are best in the world. But what we are saying is that comparative advantage, population is advantage, land is advantage. Which other one that Nigeria has? Yes. Human resources. Obama said, if you take away 25 percent of Nigerians from America health sector, it will collapse in 24 hours. Human resources in abundance. I study in Oxford and Cambridge. I have two offers with me. I finished in September. I already have two offers. Before September, I probably have about 10 offers. Already I have to come back to my company because I have a company to run in Nigeria. But here I would mean six offers. University making you a professor, then you want to stay. Where you are able to study, they say, please help us to teach in South Africa. <laughs> you don't want to come back again? This problem. Human resources is not. What can we do to bring it back? That is strategy. What is our strategy towards that? Somebody told me, oh, we want to work on Nepal. I had Jonathan saying that several times when he was president. And I have the privilege to discuss with him. And I told him, look, it have a pilot project. What do I call it? Pilot project. That is, a, that is a major program management to have Nepal for every Nigeria. What's the same million people? It can happen in two, five years. No. Do you know you have to buy the, the turbine? Before you buy a turbine, do you know you have to do design of the, of the turbine? Isn't it? When you finish, before you can design a turbine, you know you have to do a diagnosis review of your environment and its impact on the turbine to be, de to be designed. True of us. So if you use three, six months to do diagnosis review, you use six months to design, one year is over. You are not the manufacturer of the turbine. So the this turbine you design for us, it will take us 24 months to manufacture it. This is if you pay your cash today. If you get the money and you pay them, 24 months, in, they manipulate the turbine, you bring it back to Nigeria to generate electricity, what's the next thing that will happen? Installation, yes? What else? What else? What else? The transformer that will do the, the distribution, do you have to design that or not? Is the transformer on the shelf where you go and pick it up? Do you have to book for it or not? How many years does it take to manipulate the transformer? When you finish and bring it and install, what is the next thing? Huh? The gas pipe, yes, what other things? Distribution of the wire network. How does the wire come up? Do you have a, a company that manufacture wires in Nigeria that can go for the entire country like cable wire in a papa or whatever it is? So the question you then ask yourself is simple. How do you get the wire to come in? You, know, you have to talk to the manufacturer in China, isn't it? And then they finish, they have to bring it back to Nigeria. Then you have to put it on the ground. Then you have to transmit it. What next? What about, what about meter to read how much you consume? Is that fast enough that using 